Hello, everyone, and welcome to the iSpring Solutions webinar series, where every week we talk about e-learning trends, share iSpring tips and tricks, and cover clients' cases. My name is Paulina. I'm the community manager at iSpring, and I will be the moderator for today's webinar, where we will be discovering another gem of iSpring suite. Today we will talk about slide properties, and I personally think that it's somewhat a um, newer system of um, iSpring generated content. And as a presenter, I have invited my colleagues, um, Elena Douglas. Hi, Elena. Hi. And also Arena Vass. Hi, Arena. Happy Hello. to see you here. <laughs> Hello, everyone. So ladies both work at iSpring Technical Support, uh, making sure that our clients are happy iSpring users. And today we'll be more than happy to speak for you guys and discover another great feature of iSpring Suite. And also at this point, I would like to share great news. Uh, if you guys can't sit through the whole webinar and need to run to another meeting, for example, or for any other reason, this session is being recorded. So no worries, you guys will receive a link to a replay sometime after the webinar. However, I would like to encourage you to stay till the very end because it's a great opportunity to address your questions directly to our presenters. I also have my other colleague, Paul Bander, with us today. He will be helping us with all the questions coming in the chat during the sessions. Thank you very much, Paul, for joining us. And also, to submit your questions, just um, enter them in the question box, which you will find on the right side of the GoToWebinar panel. Okay, I think at this point I've covered all the necessary things and we are ready to begin. So first of all, I would like to pass the mic over to Elena. So let me do this right now and turn off our webcams. All right, so it looks like Elena, I can see your screen. Okay, that sounds great. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today. I'm happy to start our webinar. I hope everyone can hear me well. If something goes wrong or any questions arise during the presentation, please feel free to let us know in the question box on the right side of the GoToWebinar panel. Today we are going to tell you what slide properties are all about and how to get the most benefit from it. The slide properties window shows an overview of your presentation flow and gives you access to many useful features that help you to track slides, quizzes, interactions, and anything else that you add to your course. Using iSpring slide properties, you will spend less time creating your courses because in slide properties, you have almost all the settings in one place. Today, we will learn how to add an object to your course and how to change its settings. We will add branching and set up the slide duration. Arena and I will also show you how to hide slides and create a multi-level structure in the outline. We will also show you how you can easily change the layout and uh, in slide properties. After the webinar, you will know how to add a presenter and where you can create a playlist to make your course even more fun. It may seem like a lot at first, but no worries. We will tell you how you can do everything quickly and without any extra effort. Without further ado, let's organize our course. I have uh, prepared a course for you. As you can see, I have many slides there that do not work as one consistent course at all if or just view it one by one. To pull everything together, I will need to do some work in slide properties. Let me show you the course looks now before we apply any changes. To do this, we need to go to player. I enabled the outline, but it doesn't look polished enough yet. I don't like that it looks messy and it's hard to navigate through the course using this outline. For some slides, I have proper names, but for other slides, there is only an underscore. I titles in slide properties. To do that, I will click slide properties 
on the main ice cream sweet ribbon and insert the proper names. Let's select a slide and click uh, on its name. I will type there the new name. Here will be a quiz. And here are planet types. Uh, I can do this for each slide here. I also have two topics in my course, so I will divide the slides into two groups by topic to make it easier for a user to navigate through the course using an outline. In the slide properties, I can organize an outline in the form of hierarchy. I can do this by clicking Promote and Demote buttons. Or I can also increase and decrease the levels of nesting by clicking the green arrows next to the slide. In this case, I will use the green arrows. Let me quickly do this. My first group starts from the slide number one and the second group starts from the slide number seven. Now I can apply all the changes and go back to the course. To do that, I should click the save and close button. To see what has changed, let's go get back to the player. Here we can see how our groups look. Here it is. I can click this arrow uh, and the drop-down list of the slides will appear. Moreover, now we can better understand what the slide is about by its title. Looks better, doesn't it? I can exit the player now and I will go back to iSpring slide properties. Of course, you can publish your presentation as is. In this case, all your users will see the same slides in the same order. However, it is well known that an individual approach is one of the most important principles in, educa in education. With iSpring slide properties, you can easily apply this approach to your course. Your users will get a unique path depending on their level of knowledge. Let me show you how we can do that using branching. I want my users to be able to decide what they want to learn first. Here I have a slide with custom buttons that take users to info slides number five and number six, depending on their choice. To enable this, I created two custom buttons and added hyperlinks to them. I want my learners to jump to slide about Planet Slideshow, the slide number seven, by clicking the next button on either of these slides. In order to do this, I will select the slide and click on where it says default. And I will select the slide number seven in the forward branching and click OK. Now I do the same thing for the slide number six. I click on where it says default and select the slide number seven in the forward branching and click OK. Now if they click the back button, I want them to go back to my slide with the custom buttons. To do this, I will click where I have branching and select the slide about planet types in the backward branch. That is the slide number four and click OK. I do the same for the slide number six. I click here and select the slide number four in the, in the backward branch and click OK. Uh, now we can exit a slide properties by clicking save and close and preview that. I will select some slides and uh, I will click preview selected slides. Let's test how the buttons work in this case. If I click the terrestrial planets, I will be taking and I go back, 
the system sends me back to the slide with the custom buttons. Now I will click the auto planets and I land on the corresponding slide. When I go back, I'm on my slide with the buttons. If I click next from one of these slides, uh, I will be sent to the slide with the planet slideshow. At this point, uh, my users can accidentally skip these links by clicking the next button. Of course, we can avoid this. My colleague Karina will show you later how to prevent this. Keep watching. The second thing that I want to show you is how to set up branching for a slide with a quiz or a dialogue simulation, depending on the result. Let's go to the slide properties again. I haven't added a quiz or a dialogue to my course yet. Let's do it together so I can show you how we can add an object to the course directly in the slide properties window. Let's select the slide and click on where it says add. There we can select what we can do, create a new quiz, interaction or dialogue simulation or import an uh, object from a file. By the way, if you're interested in those types of content, please let us know. We will get back to you with more information. Uh, my quiz is already created, so I need uh, to click import from file and find the file on my computer. Here it is. I will click open. Now you can see a quiz icon in the last column. Let's go back to the branching. There is a trick that you can do with a quiz in the course. Basically, I can loop the quiz until the students pass it to make sure that they have learned the topic well. I have prepared an additional info slide and I want to show it before they retake the test. I need to select my slide with a quiz, go to the last column and here I can click the quiz icon. I will select branching in the drop down menu. Please make sure that the quiz branching tab is here selected. Uh, I need to specify the slide where I want to send my users to if they pass or fail the quiz. If they pass it, I will send them to the next slide. If they fail, they will be sent back to this info slide. Here it is. And after they will be able to take the quiz again, I will click OK. It looks like we are done, but not yet. Now, if users retake the quiz, they won't be able to give the answers again, and they will be automatically sent to the results slide. I don't like that. In order to avoid it and let our users to retake the quiz until they pass it, I will click the quiz icon again, select properties in the drawn down menu and check the box restart failed quiz after revisiting and click OK. I will save the changes. Please do always do this when working with your content. And now we can test it. I will select some slides and go to the preview and click preview selected slides. Let's fail the quiz. When I click next, the system automatically sends me to the info slide. I read through the text and click next. Now I'm able to take the quiz again until I pass it. And now let me pass the mic to Arena. She will present you some more features that you will definitely like. 
Thanks a lot, Elena, for this wonderful presentation. And I hope that you guys will be able to use this little tricks right away for your content creation. And let's see what Arena has to share with us at this moment. Arena. Hello, this is Arena with Sprint Tech Support. I hope you are enjoying our webinar. Before I start the second part, I just want to check in with you and see if you have any questions. Please feel free to ask them in the question box. We will be more than happy to address them. In the second part, we will finish working on our course structure and add some fun things like a slideshow, music and presenters. Elena has taught you how you can use slide branching to make your course suitable for every student. Now I will tell you how you can polish everything and really pull together all the adjustments that we have just made. I am sure that you are wondering what should we do with all these extra info slides that we should access by branching only. I'll show you how to avoid a huge mess by hiding these slides from the list and blocking navigation to prevent users from skipping anything. Here we created a quiz branching that sends the user to different slides depending on their results. Basically, a user goes to this slide with the information in the event that he or she has failed the quiz. Those who pass the quiz don't need to see the slide at all. There is an option that will work out perfectly in this situation. With slide properties, you can just hide this slide. Please don't worry, it will still be a part of the course, but will not cause any confusion. So to do that, I will open slide properties, select my info slide, and just click on where it says hide slide on the main ribbon. As you can see, the tag hidden appeared on the thumbnail. Let's preview our course and see what it looks like. So I will select these slides and just preview selected slides. Again, I will quickly take the quiz intentionally choosing wrong answers. And here am I on the hidden slide. As you can see, it does not appear in the outline and those who don't need it won't accidentally get there. It looks like I have, let's close it. It looks like I have more slides to hide in this presentation. So now I will just go back to slide properties. And as you remember here, I have a slide with hyperlinks, allowing the user to choose the slide they would like to read. I have my own buttons, so I don't want users to get there using the outline. To fix it again, I will just hide these two slides. So actually, I have a little bit of a problem here on the slide with hyperlinks. I am using iSpring controls to navigate the whole course, but on this slide, I want my users to click only on my custom buttons. To do that, I will just block the iSpring controls on these particular slides. To do that, I will just need to enable the lock here. Looks almost perfect. There is only one thing left to do. I will also change the layout for this slide to hide the outline completely. First, I will need to apply the full layout to all slides. To do that, I will click Ctrl A on my keyboard to select all slides and then click on where it says layout on the main ribbon and choose full. Now I will need to select a slide with my planet types with hyperlinks and select the no sidebar layout. Let's click save and close and see what happened. Again, I will just preview these slides. As you can see, iSpring buttons are inactive here, and also I don't have an outline on this slide. And now I can move on using only hyperlinks. As you can see, my info slides are not shown in the outline. 
All right. It to the fun part. With iSpring, you can set up slides to advance automatically to the next one after a specified period of time. That will allow you to create beautiful slideshows in just a few clicks. Here I have several slides that I want to use to create a slideshow. To begin, I will go to Slide Properties and I will need to set timings for my slides to create a slideshow. Here in Advanced column, I can set the timing for each slide. To change the duration for several slides at once, I will need to select them and type in the duration time here on the main ribbon. Today I will type in just two seconds as an example. All right. When we are done with the timings, we can move on and set the slides to advance automatically. I've already selected necessary slides, so now I can just click on where it says Auto. By the way, you can select both options on Click and Auto. In this case, the given slide will advance automatically, but the user will also be able to advance to the next slide by clicking the mouse button. Let's click Save and Close and see what it looks like in preview. Again, I'm selecting my slides and previewing them. Here it is. As you can see, my slides advance automatically and I can click it to, so to proceed faster. To make our slideshow even more engaging, I will add some background music. In Slide Properties, you can create playlists with an unlimited number of tracks. The great part is that you can create several different playlists and use them in future projects. Before I add music to the presentation, I will need to create my playlist. To do that, let's click where it says Playlist and go to Manage Playlists. Now I will click New and type in the name for my, playlist, for my playlist. I will insert it here, click OK. Then I will hit this green button to add my music. All right, now I can click Close. Now let's add audio to our project. I will select the slides that, so the slides of the slideshow, then click on where it says playlist and choose my newly created playlist. Perfect, I am done with this part. I can just click save and close. So now, now let's go to the last slide. Here I have a webinar by my colleague Anna. When adding a webinar speech or an article, it is very important that we add a reference to the author to respect copyright and make sure that the students know exactly who the presenter is. In slide properties, you can assign a presenter to the slide. Let's just go to slide, to iSpring slide properties and click on where it says none in presenter column. However, as you can see now, I don't have any options available. First, we will need to create a presenter card using another iSpring Suite option on the main ribbon, which is presentation resources. So now I will close slide properties and go to the presentation resources. Here I will create my presenter card. To do that, I will go to presenters and click add. Here I will need to fill in the fields uh, with the presenter info. Give me just a second, I will quickly copy and paste that to save time. So I will insert the title. Okay. Oops, looks like some technical issue. I will just type it in. All right, now I can quickly copy and paste the email my website, phone number, and then just browse the photo. Here it is. Now I can click OK. I've just created my presenter card. I can click OK once again. Now let's go back to the slide properties and again click on where it says, says none in presenter window. Now I have my presenter card and I can choose it. 
All right, finally, we are done with our course. Now we can publish it and share it with our students. To save time, in the browser and we will see how it looks. Here it is. Here is my quiz. I will quickly take it. Again, giving their own answers. Here is my info slide for the quiz. So now I can click next and retake the quiz, but I'm not going to do that. I will just click on where it says Planet Slideshow. Here is my slideshow. And here is my last slide with my webinar. As you can see here, I have a presenter card. All right, today we learned how we can manage almost all settings in one place using the slide properties feature. We learned how to perfect our course navigation and make the course more fun for students. And also we learned a couple of good examples of how we can apply an individual approach using the iSpring Suite authoring tool. I hope this information will help you to create advanced courses that will be much more efficient for your users than just regular presentations. So I think that's all. I hope you enjoyed our webinar. Now I can pass the mic to Paulina. Thanks a lot, Arena. Uh, thank you. Thanks to both of you ladies. I think you covered a very important topic and I hope that you guys who joined our webinar today will be able to use it and apply in your courses right away to faster organize the flow of your content. At this point, I would like to ask if you have any questions, if you still have any questions, because Paul has been helping us a lot in the chat and has um, answered all the questions coming during the actual presentation. And while you're thinking if you would like to ask anything else, I would like to invite you to our next webinar, which will be held on next week on June 13th by our friend and great expert Mark Simon. He will be talking about adding video to your course and he will exactly talk about when it is important to use or when it is easier to use PowerPoint functionality and when it is best to use iSpring functionality. So the webinar will be quite interesting and I will I am sharing the link to it right now in the question box. I also would like to ask your opinion um, on this particular session so that we can prepare for the next webinars better and provide more relevant content. So if you would uh, take a moment and share with us um, how did you find this particular session, it will be very helpful. Okay, so let's get down to the questions. I see some comments um, that you guys shared in the chat. So let me quickly um, skim through it. Okay, so let me just read through it one by one. Um, Nancy is saying, can you attach this presentation to the webinar recording as it would help to take our time to look at how the changes were made at our own speed? Yes, absolutely. We will be sharing this particular presentation and I think that you guys uh, would actually be able to practice along with the recording of this seminar so that, I mean, at your own pace. Okay, Brad says, excellent coverage. I learned a few tricks today. Awesome, that's that's great. Thanks for sharing a lot. Um, Sandy is saying, any tips for working with one long audio file and spreading it over multiple slides? So I assume that's a question. All right, so I can definitely help you with this question. So in iSpring Suite, there is an option which is called Manage Narration. So let me open that. So with, uh, with the Manage Narration op option, you can synchronize the audio track to the, to the slides. Let me show you how to do that. So I will click audio and add my audio here. Um, now I can just uh, click on where it says sync and start sync. All right, just click next slides 
And now if I preview that, I will hear my audio playing through the slides. So this is, I think this is a very convenient way to work with the audio for the presentation and a playback, a playlist for the presentation. <laughs> so that's it. I hope it is helpful. Thanks a lot, Arena. Uh, sorry, too many questions. I'm uh, trying to figure out which ones are the questions, which ones are the feedback. Um, yeah, so some of the questions Paul will help us with and get back to you guys after the webinar. Um, okay, Tony is saying, brilliant. Thank you, Brad. I appreciate the short duration. 30 minutes allows us to absorb the content with minimal distractions. Yes, I definitely agree with that. Um, that was great, says Shauna. Truly a hidden gem as described. I definitely agree with that. And actually, this webinar was requested by one of our um, icebringers. So if you guys have any ideas for future sessions, please share with us. Okay, Jenny says uh, when the presenter previewed, she went really fast. Overall, I think she um, should show down. So sorry, she should slow down so I can see for a longer time. Yes, exactly. But um, the good thing is that the recording will be available, so you will be able to uh, review it at your own pace. But we will definitely take this into account for our future sessions. Uh, Dan Green, actually Dan was that one who requested this session and he says that it was exactly what he was looking for. Dan, we are very um, happy to hear that. All right. Um, so yes, um, for the presentation we will share with you, there will be a link which you will click and you will be taken to a uh, page online where you will be able to download all the resources. Okay. Um, Anne says, I appreciate all the tips provided today. Very helpful, thanks. Okay, so it looks like we have covered all the questions and some of them we will get back to you after the webinar. Some of the questions that we covered during this session, I will include um, along with the video in the description on YouTube. So I hope that works, guys. And I think at this point we are ready to wrap up. I would like to thank Elena and Arena for providing us a very valuable piece of information. And I hope that you guys will be able to use it after this webinar for your in your content creation. And thanks a lot for tuning in today because without you, this sessions don't make any sense and moreover won't be possible. And I would like to thank Paul for taking care of all the questions coming in the chat. You are helpful as always. Hope that everyone has a wonderful day and we'll see you at the next session. Bye-bye everyone. Bye Elena, bye Irina, bye Paul. Goodbye everyone. Thank you very much for joining us.